Hello and welcome to Dingo's Ate My Podcast. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. I'm Justin. And this week we are talking about the episode Amends. This episode originally aired December 15th, 1998. So it's our Christmas episode for the year. It's not like Christmas. Is this going to be a common thing? thing. Like, are we going to get more Christmas episodes? I don't think there's any more Christmas episodes. <sighs> Maybe more Halloween episodes. Yes, every other year they'll do a Halloween episode. Okay, good. Well, it is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, it fits a little better with Halloween than with Christmas. Yes, usually. <laughs> well, actually, there's a there's a Christmas episode of Supernatural that's really good, but that's irrelevant. To that's a different series. <laughs> it is a different series. We'll they, leave it for now. Where there's a killer Santa. Anyway... It's Christmas time in Sunnydale. So, happiness, right? Uh, and Angel is haunted with dreams of people he murdered over the years as I'm jealous. Uh, Christmas spirit. Uh, <laughs> when Buffy starts getting dragged into his memory nightmare things, experiencing Angel's dreams also, they realize something unnatural is happening. Visions of his past victims, including Jenny Callender, appear to him and try to get him to kill Buffy saying that he will be released from the pain he feels if he does so. Angel cannot bring himself to do this, so instead he opts to kill himself by standing on a hill and waiting for the sun to come up. Meanwhile, Oz tells Willow that he is willing to give their relationship another chance, while Cordelia is not as forgiving, and resumes her, pro- her previous hostilities towards the Scooby gang. Mm. Buffy and Giles figure out the first evil has been driving Angel insane. Buffy finds the bringers and pummels them. Well, not really. After the first appears to her, informing her that she cannot possibly fight it and that Angel is about to be destroyed by the dawn's light, she runs to his mansion to stop him. Oz goes to Willow's house to watch videos, only to find her dressed up and playing Barry White's music, (laughs) intending to sleep with him. Oz appreciates the gesture, but uh, but explains to Willow that he wants their first time to be special rather than just a way for her to try to make things up to him. Buffy, who... uh, Invited and <laughs> and is ordered by Joyce to have faith over for Christmas. Buffy goes to find Angel atop the hill behind the mansion, awaiting sunrise. However, the heat wave from which Sunnydale has been suffering abruptly ends, and the first snowflakes of and the first flakes of snow start to fall. When the weather reports uh, says that the sun will not be expected to be seen all day, Buffy and Angel walk through town, and that is not how snow works, you motherfuckers. Yeah. Well, I don't know. The, apparently, Sunnydale's in what California, Southern California, or something. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be in Southern California. Yeah, they don't know how snow works. Yeah, but like, well, that's clear by the way that they like. So they do the street set where there's like all the snow on the ground, and that looks fine. Yeah. But then they zoom out, and there's a traffic light, and there's none in the little gimmick there. Uh, and I'm like, you fuckers have never seen snow. That no. shit gets in everything. <laughs> Oz is best boy in this. Yes. O- Oz is best boy? Oz is best boy. Oz yes. Is best boy. I have to admit to that. Oz is, Oz is good. Oz is really good in this episode. He is. Everybody's really good in this episode, really. Well, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, no, especially Oz. I don't know. It was basically just, like, he was being very real with um, Willow. Yeah. No, Oz is Oz is pretty much always like that, though. I know, mm, but especially true. in this episode, though, I, I thought he did very well. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. It turned really out funny. nicely. Well, within the sense that Angel's being tormented by a particular dark evil thing to go and do horrible stuff. Because Christmas. Because Christmas. Yeah. Uh, Christmas. <laughs> it's a Christmas episode about murder. Okay. But one particular thing about that, the first evil kind of showed the caveat of Angel needed to either share or show Buffy grief in some sort of sense. And that sort of struck me as, wait a sec, you wanted to go ahead and have Angel do all these particular evil things, but all he really need to do, really need to do is be real with Buffy and kind of end the relationship in that sort of sense because that's kind of how I got it throughout the episode yeah I think the the purpose of that is very much for the writers to be like okay moving forward 
this isn't about Buffy and Angel's relationship. Like, mm. they have to sever that because Angel's going to go off and do his own show soon. Mm. And they have to have Buffy not constantly longing for Angel. Mm. But still, at the end, it was just super nice with the snow and it's just, ah, they get to walk one last time. Just not as lovers or any sort of thing. It's still cool. What did you think, Justin? Well, it was a fairly decent episode. Things were going on here and there that, um, I mean, I like how uh, Xander still ends up sleeping outside <laughs> in the sleeping bag. I love that when the snow starts falling, she's like, ah, oh, fuck it. Yeah. And pulls the sleeping <laughs> bag over his head. It's and like, then he's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's snow. Why is it snow? What is this white stuff? <laughs> okay, so there's actually a couple of important things in this episode. So this is the first introduction of the first evil. Yes. The first introduction. Yes. So there will be a second. Yes. This is a seed that they've planted for season seven. <sighs> what? <Sorry. laughs> That's going to be your big bad in season seven. Okay. Oh, no. Because, yeah, first evil shows up as a whole bunch of different people. Buffy actually faces him, shows off his other particular form. And in some cases, I can sort of point out a basis of what it transformed into, but that stuff's like some Cthulhu type of stuff. And, uh... Yeah, so the first evil does take credit for bringing Angel back. But, considering who the first evil is, can we really trust them? No. Fair enough. There are two other major theories about who brings back Angel. So, well, wait, it's just theories, not actual It's facts. never been officially stated. Crazy. Because the show writers are just like, ha ha, I'll make you we'll suffer by not telling you. Just leave the questions for the fans. So, the two major theories are either that it's the powers that be... Or, it's the senior partners of Wolfram and Hurt. And neither of those things mean anything to you because you haven't watched Angel. Fair. Yeah. Uh, Wolfram and Hart is a law firm that Angel will end up working for. Ah. Okay, he'll end up working for them. First he fights against them, and then he ends up working for them. Actually, I think he ends up running a law firm. <laughs> but yeah. don't ask. But why would it's, that be the... whatever. It's Angel. <laughs> You remember that episode where Angel got turned into a puppet? Because you made us watch that, yes. Because <laughs> it's I good? Recall. It was mildly hilarious in parts. Very, very questionable in other parts. Because it was good? And because he was a bleeding puppet? <laughs> <laughs> that was when he was working for Wolf Run Hurt. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that was a fun tangent for me. Alrighty then. Oh, I also love how the characters are always complaining that they're too hot. And they're all wearing long sleeves. And I'm like, dumbasses, get a t-shirt. Yeah, that's, really? true. that's true. I love how, like, Xander has, like, like um, a dress shirt and then, like, a sweater on. And he's like, it's really hot. Are you that fucking dumb? Hey, want to get out of the not-cold weather outside? <laughs> it's like you're in fucking California. Why do you own a sweater? It's not like it's going to... Oh, <laughs> I also love how um, Joyce wants Buffy to have Faith come over, and then Buffy quickly mentions bringing Giles over, and Joyce is like, "No, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I wonder if we'll get any more details on that later. No, I have a decent idea about that. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> it will be good. Huh. There seemed to be a hint of something, as far as I'm aware. Alrighty, let's move on to international titles. So in French, it's Christmas Sun, spelled with a U. The sun will rise, maybe. And in German, it's Hauntings. It makes sense. But... Yeah. I, I think I honestly prefer the English title out of all of them. It's just Amends. It works. And now we move on to music, where they actually spent some money. Because they normally don't really. Well, I mean, n normally they're getting like South Cal uh, like, uh, Southern California indie bands to give them a song for meh, twenty bucks, meh. but which is fine. It wasn't yeah, anything no. I was particularly paying attention to, 
But they didn't exactly overwhelm the entire episode with Christmas songs. Were there any within this episode, or was it just like kind of a singing backdrop? in the background? I, so there might be like caroling in the background, but there's none in the soundtrack. Oh, okay, mostly yeah. just sort of a mild scene of a flashback of Angel's life, but within the actual story of the episode... We never hear, like, jingle bells or anything. Nothing sort of obvious, aside from, oh, look, Christmas trees. You want one that's... You want one that's spray-painted white? Okay, so, uh, for music, we have Barry White, Can't Get Enough of Your Love, Babe, which is when Oz arrives at Willow's. Oh, boy. Um, Uh. Oh, fuck, I'm gonna screw this name up. Joanne... Patchel Bell? Sure, why not? Canon in D Major, which plays before Angelus kills Margaret in 1883. Ah, uh, Because yes. we get a flashback. Hmm. And finally, The Crystals, He's a Rebel. And obviously, original score. Hmm. Because we get some flashbacks and stuff, and that's good. Oh, man, Jeez. that scene with Willow and Oz and the music. It's so good. Just that... Willow's just trying, and she's near the end of her rope and wants to do something, and she's just like, Willow, didn't Oz already kind of explain to you that this is not what he kind of wants? It's good that you're trying, but still... Okay, there's several levels that Willow could have done. She went all the way. Then... Well, she she could have kicked it up a notch further, but it's probably best that she didn't. (laughs) I'm not sure that she could handle that next level. Because even for the level she was at, that's just kind of pushing her character. That's how desperate she was kind of pushed to. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's a really great character moment for both Willow and Oz. It was. Yeah, it's 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 a good time. Plus, we get snow. Snow Snow that blocks out the sun. They threw snow Screw at the you sun. Screw the rest of the weather. <laughs> Screw you, physics. <sighs> what, did they just pitch ba- black clouds or something? I don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> so if neither of you have any other thoughts... Not bored now. Mm. Merry Christmas. You're going to regret that when it comes up. Because you're going to feel really bad. They all enjoy it for the time being. Okay, so our next episode, gingerbread. I don't know what this entails, uh, but what what the hell does that entail? Okay, so um, <clears throat> when two children bearing symbols of the occult are found murdered in the park, already good good opening. Yeah, uh, Joyce leads a campaign against witches in Sunnydale because Joyce goes on patrol with Buffy. Oh um, boy. So it's good times. Okay, but what uh, else? Yeah. Mm, hmm. Not a whole lot of people know that, though. Ah. Uh, and then there's also uh, Amy. We haven't seen Amy for a while. Yeah, not for a while. Not I mean, for a while. Those are the only two witches I know of in this that series been... so far. Other than the mother, who well, was a statue, but... So the magic box made its debut a couple episodes ago. So there's clearly a people in that that are at least interested in magic. Mm, true. Mm. True. Because the magic box will become important later. Oh boy. Because mm. Giles will end up buying it. Spoilers. Of course. <laughs> and Giles will dress as a wizard. <laughs> and it's good. It's gonna be a wizard. Oh boy. Oh, have you never seen... Have I never shown you that? No, I haven't seen Giles as a wizard. Oh boy. Yeah, it's... Oh, it's like my favorite image ever. (laughs) It's a freaking Dumbledore without a beard. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah, that'll actually happen. Brilliant. Oh boy. (laughs) It's good. All right, so if neither of you have anything to add, I'm Paul. I'm Dave. I'm Justin. Giles as a wizard is good. <laughs>